Um, please help me invite to the stage Ross Spence from the UK. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, I don't understand if uh, you uh, miss an, um, if you interpreted TNA as total non-stop action wrestling. But um, yes, uh, actually, I am from the National Archives of the UK. Um, I just see if this button works. No, this button doesn't work. Does that one work? No. Um, so my, my talk is about the evolution of digital preservation at the National Archives. Um, and before I start, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you very much to the conference organizers for having me along. Uh, Jager too, so I think has been quite instrumental in getting a representative of the National Archives here at TNA. Um, and Mick Rauch as well, who I've spoken to a lot over the last couple of weeks and um, has been helping to get here. Um, uh, first of all, firstly, a little bit about me. Um, I might just move over here. Um, a little bit about me is I'm a digital preservation researcher at the National Archives. Um, I think our team is about seven strong, eight strong. Um, I have a varied and very, very spread role. Um, my, main, my main tasks are working with uh, Droid and Pronom, but I also I, I work, at a very, work at a very low level of the data that we receive at the National Archives, doing things like file format identification. Um, I do, yeah, so format research. I do tool development. So recently I've been working on a, a JPEG 2000 validator that we're using as part of our workflow. Um, and doing some C++ and such. I also work on linked data, which I'll discuss in a little bit, and that's what we're doing with our Pronom database at the minute. Um, but first of all, there's an important message I just want to address. It's, it's following uh, Jeff's presentation, which I found thoroughly interesting. Um, it's just resource. It's important to possibly remember that our department is seven strong at the National Archives, and that's an organization of 700 people. Um, out of that seven, perhaps four of us are doing core digital preservation, um, which, I don't know, I think perhaps that's a challenge that digital preservation has to face. It's certainly a challenge that the National Archives has to face in terms of we could address everything that Jeff was talking about, but we really have to focus on what we can do immediately to address digital preservation. Um, so the preservation, uh, so this presentation is, is, a, is, is a, it's about a march of progress. It's, I've been at, the pres uh, been at the National Archives for three years. Um, and, and in that time, I've seen, I've seen the department develop from one stage to another. I think we're in a good place now, and I'll get to where we are when we get to the end of the presentation. Um, but the, the, the march of progress at the National Archives started much earlier than that. I think Adrian Brown kicked everything off in the early noughties, and Tim Gollins, my head of department, came along and has moved things along further. And, 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 and this presentation just discusses how we've, how we've changed things, perhaps for the better, um, uh, and, but we'll see by the end of the presentation. So firstly, what we do uh, in digital preservation is we, we, we provide two, two core services to the community um, in Pronom and Droid. Droid is an open source tool that you can find on SourceForge, and Pronom is a, a catalog of, of file format information that we host locally at the National Archives. So one drives the other. Pronom is a catalog file format information, for those who don't know, that contains primarily format signatures, so unique bytes that uh, occur at the beginning of every file format that um, identify that, what that file format is. Uh, Droid reads those bytes, uh, pulls it down from the Pronom catalog, and then it identifies for people in, work, uh, people in digital preservation the format that they're working with. And usually it's in, uh, incorporated into a workflow. Um, and and it, it's very much the first step of, ident uh, of, of digital preservation, understanding what you've got. Um, so, Pronom covers a lot more than just file format information. It covers software, it covers uh, compression types, character encodings. Um, and as you see here at the bottom, it, it contains additional data such as supplier information, uh, release dates, documentation. Uh, it could potentially store sample file formats. It's a really, really massive database. Um, it's, and, and again, going back to resource, and I think perhaps that's the theme of this presentation that I didn't expect before hearing Jeff, is that resources is, is, is just a big problem for us in terms of digital preservation at the National Archives. Um, so what do we do to address that? I mean, if you have a look at a record within, within Pronom, we've got here um, and the icon file format. Um, and we can, we've got some good facts here. We've got information about MIME types. Um, we've got... Uh, we've got a PUID, the unique identifier, which allows us to talk about this format as a community. Um, and we've got the name of the format. There's no version. We say it's an image and a raster, a raster image. But if you look at the description here, we've only got an outline entry. It really doesn't mean very much. Um, 
And we've got uh, developed by, supported by, entry, entry, empty, empty fields, um, mainly because we haven't got the resource to populate that out of every single record we've got. Um, we do have a signature for this, um, and that's what we do well. But to try and rectify this problem, to try and make sure that we're giving a better service to the community, we simplify what we're doing. So when we were, look, we were looking back at the Bronom 6.2 model back um, quite early on when I first started, possibly within the first year, and, we've, and we began to realize all these fields for that. There was no way we were going to be able to fill them. So what do we need to do? First, we need to simplify. And the simplification was to, uh, to focus on formats only. And that was to provide the period, the name, and facts about the format which we could find easily, um, such as internet media type. Uh, and internet media type and the extension of that format. But then we simplify further. We don't think about the, the, the rest of that format record. We think about providing a signature, which again, it's very much a fact that a format has this byte sequence. And using that byte sequence, the, pres the community can tell what a format is. Um, and so, yeah, um, we tend to only populate the database now with formats that we can get a signature for. We have a, a, a massive. Uh, data that we need to fill out retrospectively, but anything new that goes in, we, we take it as a statement of the format, that there's a, there's a byte sequence that, rec that, that says that this is very much a format. We can give it a period. Um, it's a de facto specification about that format. Um, and it's the data that I think as a community, the, it's the front line. We're immediately interested in it. Um, so yeah. Um, but it's still difficult. After we've done that simplification, you've got you've got a situation where we're, we're, um, we're swamped by formats. Um, I mean, this is just a wordle of, of, of all the file extensions, just a handful of file extensions I found on Wikipedia that, that, that we could all potentially receive as an archive, no matter how much we control what government departments are doing. Um, and we need to know what they are, because as soon as something comes in that we don't know what it is, then we've got a preservation problem. Um, so what do we do? We build a community, and looking at the release note that we've just put out, um, it, it says a story in itself that we've got we've got National Library of New Zealand um, signatures here, and we've got Georgia Tech Research Institute uh, signatures here, um, and that is a community. Uh, this last slide about community uh, should also just be about communication as well. We communicate, and I, I was thinking when we were talk when Jeff was talking about who we communicate and collaborate with. Um, and our work with Jay or our work with Georgia Tech is very much collaboration. But we have worked in the past with uh, Catherine Holzen from Ex Libris, uh, British Library. And it's just a communication attempt to try and say, uh, you and Cochrane even, um, to try and understand our tools where people are having problems. I'm looking forward to Jay's presentation later because um, uh, the, collaborator, the collaboration is important, but it's also important for us to hear the feedback to understand how we can improve our tools. Um, so one of the attempt, one of the things we did was we held a we held a, a conference uh, talking about Droid and how we're going to move Droid forward into the future. And again, we had representatives from from um, um, from the British Library, from Planets, and and this was an attempt for us to get people in a room to all talk about the same subject and a very specific subject, Droids, how we can move it forward. Uh, and this. This is one of the evolutions of, 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 of our work at the National Archives. We've gone from a position where um, signatures were developed by the National Archives to, to identify just their own, their own formats they were receiving, to now trying to think a lot more about the community, because we, uh, we will receive very specific formats. We'll have Microsoft Office formats, but it will give us no, by no means any coverage within Pronum. We really need the community to help come to us and say, this is what we're doing, these are the formats we're seeing, or these are the things we need, and we can take that on board and improve our services, but also improve what you give back to the community. Um, so, um, so what we're doing next with Droid is we're going to develop Droid 7, and that'll probably introduce new features for the community, such as text-based identification, which I know is, um, it, it can't be done with the current Droid engine um, easily. So we'll have to think about how we do that. Um, so uh, one of the other things we're doing for the community is linked data pronom. And this is another evolution in the data model as well. Um, so linked data pronom, um, there's some information here about the lab's website. Um, 
and a presentation I did um, at this Droid conference talks about when a migration pathway is not a migration pathway. Again, it talks about the simplification of our data model. But the principles of this presentation was to, um, to talk about how we re-engineer the system, how we're simplifying the system further, how we're making it easier to maintain and extensible. But also, my view of linked data is there are two, uh, there are two benefits to it. Uh, one is being able to publish data that people can share, uh, sorry, for us to share that people can use, and one is consumption. And so one of the things we're doing with Linked Data Prolom is we're going to link to resources that, that describe uh, areas about software or file formats better than we can. Um, and also we're going to try and consume data. So if people can publish data in a format compatible to compatible with the pronoun vocabulary, then perhaps we can consume it directly into our database, and then immediately we've got a distributed mechanism to get that data back out to, to the rest of the community. Um, so three of my favorite slides from this presentation here just trivialize the entire problem. Within Pronom, we've got, we try and describe Microsoft um, in terms, you know, you've got a piece of software that's been developed by Microsoft. So we have, a, in, uh, rightly so, in our database, we've got tables that say, this is what Microsoft is. But why? There are, we can go to a company's house, and, and my, they can give us information about Microsoft. We can go to DBpedia and get more information about Microsoft. And with linked data, perhaps we can go to Microsoft and just say, what do you do? Microsoft can do a lot better job of saying what Microsoft is better than us. And if you extend that to software, and if you extend that to file formats, then if you guys are all saying, these are the file formats we're using, these are the bits of software we're using, and then it's a model that allows us to, to broaden pro, um, Pronom without us having to um, use four people to populate that database. Um, uh, so the next evolution that we're thinking about within, uh, that I've seen within the National Archives is we're starting to think about a droid suite of tools. Um, now, I'll get to a little bit about this later with the next project that we're working on, uh, the repository project. But what we're seeing within the National Archives is that we have needs for tools, such as um, the JP2 validator I mentioned earlier, or, or um, here we've got um, a signature development utility. And what we're thinking about doing is, as, as these tools are developed internally by us, we're going to release them as, as part of a suite of tools that all belong to you know, a preservation suite that people can use. And it's, it, that's another way of we're trying to give back to the community to say, um, and, and hopefully the community can give back to us some similar ideas. Um, so, yeah, it's an internal concept, concept at the minute. So a lot of these tools haven't been released yet. The JP2 validator, for example, we're going to think about getting on Jet, um, GitHub at some point. But the signature development utility, that's something we developed as part of the Linked Data Pronom project. And I was very eager to get that out ASAP. Um, and I know we've sent that to Jay. And I know Georgia Tech were using that to uh, develop signatures for us recently. Um, and, 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 and hopefully we can start providing tools for, this, for, for, for the community that form part of an ecosystem of, of digital preservation. Um, so here's a, here's a link to the signature development utility if anyone wants to take a look. Um, but this is all really low level. I mean, this is, this, these are things that we're doing really just to identify our formats and make it easier for other people to look at file formats. Um, strategically, the, the, the organization has moved on. And I think this, this really does relate to what Jeff was saying. I think um, in his terms that we're in denial, um, but in our terms, we're doing what we can to preserve what we can. Um, and so our view of obsolescence is we acknowledge it's a problem. Uh, so yeah, our view of obsolescence has evolved in, our time, in my time at the TNA. We acknowledge it's a problem, but it's less pressing for us because we realize there are bigger problems to deal with. Um, the formats we deal with, we rely a lot on the ubiquity. We know that we can access Microsoft Word formats from the noughties. We can access, you know, Word Perfect formats from from the late eighties and noughties. This, um, we we don't think that the formats we're going to be receiving are going to be an immediate issue. Um, but yes, it is a problem. Um, we have to make sure we can get some stuff in though, so we can preserve that. Um, we haven't designed our system around it. I think is the message here. Um, what we need to do is we need to use Droid and the tools mentioned previously to know what we've got, preserve the bitstreams, and then, then we can work on them. But we have to get them into a repository first. And so we move, I move on to talk about an unholy trinity. These are the three problems that we feel are you know, immediately facing this team of four or the National Archives as a whole. 
Uh, the first being volume. Um, we know what we're going to be receiving at the National Archives. We're going to have 9 million home guard images. There's a billion documents and the UK government web archive. These are not, the, the web, uh, the web archive isn't currently hosted at the National Archives. It's hosted by the Internet Memory Foundation. At some point, this has to be taken into our repository, and we're going to have to deal with it. Um, we could think about every single problem that Jeff talks about, but first of all, we have to put it into our repository. And the first thing we have to do to put it into our repository is, um, is identify what's there. Um, there's, and the amount of data that we're going to have by 2020 is 6 petabytes. Um, that's 3.2 petabytes accession and 6 petabytes, including things like representation copies of those formats and, and other um, ephemera that surround those formats, such as metadata and such. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, so then we move on to the ability to ingest. Um, and this is a huge problem. Um, so we're building a digital repository infrastructure, and it is exactly what it says. It's, it's an infrastructure to allow us to accession this volume of documents that we're receiving. Um, uh, it isn't a trivial problem. Um, the nine, you know, um, we're currently we're currently writing a proof of concept, which is going to take in ninety thousand home guard images and, and, and prove that we can get from start to finish accessioning those without, without issue. But we've got 250 government departments and we've got no understanding of their capability or infrastructure. Um, and that's, that's just the way government works. We've, they, they all have their own IT departments, they all have their own contractors, they, they all do things in their own way and rightfully so. Um, that's how they should be working. But when we receive that, because we've got no idea of what we're getting, and we can't design a system that says, well, we're going to get all of this, we're going to get all of this. Uh, the, the automized, the, to build a system and to build an automated system that deals with all this reply, um, suggests a consistency. But we're going to have diversity, we're going to have variability. Um, and and you, obsolescence on that level, you just can't deal with. You need to have a system that's flexible to be able to take it in, and then you can deal with it. Um, so yeah, DRI needs to handle large volume and quantity, and it also has to handle that diversity, whatever it looks like. And so just, just to highlight the problem that we've got is that we're currently dealing with the perfect succession. Um, now, I've been involved with this succession um, yeah, fr from the very beginning, from the contract that went out to suppliers to say, can you scan these documents for us? Um, it's the, the 90,000 home guard images. We've had complete control of the supply chain. And it's a single format, JPEG 2000. But we still have issues, both human and technical, and, and um, metadata format, it, that we've, we've found many, many issues. And um, so one of the things we've got is a stage, we, we receive those documents, and we've got a stage before it hits the repository where we're fixing metadata. So uh, fixing metadata so that, it, uh, so that it can flow into the repository properly. You know, where um, comma set separated value tables have got the commas are in the right place. Um, and the data all looks how we expect it to look. Um, the JPEG 2000s, we found issues with the, the way we're, uh, the, the XML metadata was being encoded into that. So we've got a stage where, um, where we're, 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 we're modifying that metadata so that the image works properly and can be ingested. Um, and and it's, it's, really, it's, it's really hard to believe that we've had complete control of this, but we still haven't been able to get it into our repository properly. Um, but every, we will learn from this for the next accession that looks like this. It should go through smoother. But if you times this, if you take the 250 government departments and think about the variability that they're going to exhibit, there's going to be an interesting problem. DRI really can only be as flexible as it can be to be able to handle that, but we can't solve all the problems of digital preservation to take that stuff in. Um, but one of the problems that what, the, the final problem is knowing what we've got. If we know what we've got, then we can preserve the bitstream. Um, and I think that's that's the problem I mentioned earlier. That's where the evolution of our department began. And I think we're in a pretty good place with that. Um, I think we do need to increase the community effort. And Link Data Pronom does need to become unstuck. Uh, we need to focus on that this year and 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 sort of bring all that data together so that people can use it. But I think we're in a positive place. I think we're in a place where I think we pretty much can tell what we've got. Um, and, and with the efforts such as Jay's or GTRI or, or, or whoever wants to give us format information, uh, that's only, continue to get, only gonna continue to get better for us. Um, and finally, with five minutes, 23 remaining, um, that's where we are. Um, this presentation has really given me a, a chance to reflect about where we are as a, 
within the National Archives, but I've cheekily put here, perhaps as a discipline. Um, and I think, given this March of Progress diagram, I do think we're here, uh, uh, technically Cro-Magnon Cro man. Um, it's very symbolic. We've got tools. We've got rocks that we, that we use to smash things open. We've got knives that we use to cut things. Um, we've got spears. We've got complicated tools that we're starting to develop to think about. Um, but I don't think, I mean, I guess we all know that we're not quite this guy here, Homo sapiens, at the end. It's, we, we've, we, we're still in a position where we're learning. Uh, I think Jay's presentation later is going to be really interesting. I think when we can go back on Pronom and think this isn't quite right and this isn't quite right and think about how we're going to improve that. We're, we're this guy here with his tool thinking, I can improve this tool. And hopefully, once we've improved it, we can get to this position where we're walking upright. Um, and I think that was it for me. Um, I think questions are later, but thank you very much. Would you like to stay at the microphone and take one or two questions while Jay comes up and becomes our next presenter? So does anybody have a, a question at the moment? Just burn it, just say it out, and we'll repeat it for the camera. Yep, yeah, at the back there, waving your arm. The range of formats, um, no. Now I the question is, just to be to put the camera on, the question is, do you have any idea of the current range of formats that you have in, what was uh, it? At the, at, the, at the National Archives. So I think in terms of um, distribution, I can't really answer that. Um, we, we obviously have office formats, we have media formats, uh, image formats. Um, in terms of number, I, we're looking at about 400 signatures that we can identify, uh, format, 400 formats that we can identify at the minute. Um, but that's, that's barely a scratch on the surface. Thank you for that.